Here's an interesting book that I would say is not the easiest book to learn from, but it's still a good book because it has solid information. It's also a very old school looking book. Uh, looks like it's from the past. That's because it is. It's called Complex Variables. It's by Caldwell and Matthews. It's an older book, as you can see. Charles E. Merrill Publishing Company. I wonder if that still exists. Uh, this is a really old book. It's all yellow here. It's got someone's name there. I don't know who that is. Introduction to Complex Variables. Peter Carl Gerald, Gerald C. Matthews, Iowa State University. And there's the copyright. Wow, it's a long time ago. 1973. I'm just going to give it a whiff here. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this book existed before I did. The uses and users of complex analysis appear in all the physical and engineering sciences. This book offers a brief, efficient introduction to the subject which develops most of the techniques we perceive to be basic and common to all users. Most modern applications of complex analysis require more than these basic techniques. For this reason, an introduction to complex variable methods must try to show why the techniques work as, as well as what they are. And let's look at the topics. Ames, Iowa. I wonder if it was cold when he wrote this book. Functions of a complex variable. That would be chapter one, starts with complex numbers, functions and mappings, derivatives and analytic functions, and harmonic functions. Then we have elementary functions. So we have the exponential function, the trigonometric and hyperbolic functions, inverse functions, and multiple valued functions. The crow agrees. And then some additional comments on multi-valued functions complex integration. So this, these topics are very standard. Again, not the easiest book. There's easier ones, but it's a pretty good book. And the fact you can probably get it pretty inexpensively makes it worth it. Plus it gives you a different perspective. You know, it's better to have more than one complex variables book. Infinite series. This is really familiar, especially if you've had some Calc 2, you're going to notice that a lot of the things that you do in complex variables are very similar to the things you do in Calc 2 uh, when it comes to series. So you do a lot of those same series tests. This is fun, residues and evaluation of integrals, conformal mapping, two applications of conformal mapping, and analytic continuation. So a typical undergraduate course, like if you were to go to a college here in the US, you'd definitely cover most of the first five chapters and maybe some of these, it just depends. It says there's answers to the problems on page 205. Let's just jump to that just to see what we got. And as you can see, there are some answers, but not all. But you do get, you do get quite a few uh, here in the back of the book, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I got to smell it. I'm sorry. Ah, smells amazing. 1973 here. What a piece of history, right? Just such, a, such an old book. Such an old book. Mathematics is beautiful. And then here's references. These are other books on complex variables. I have, let's see, which ones do I have? I have the one by Churchill. And I have the one by Spiegel. I might have some of the others. I don't, some of these I don't have. You got to remember, these are older books. Some of these are probably harder to find uh, because this book is from 73. So notice the date on all of these. Uh, you know, they're all prior to 73. Obviously, they're not going to have books that were published in the future <laughs> as a reference. Uh, so here's the beginning. In some ways, the beginning of the study of complex valued functions of a complex variable is very much like an elementary calculus course. I agree. Primarily because these functions include all the real valued functions of a real variable which were studied in calculus. The elementary calculus gives us a natural vocabulary to use and the natural sequence of ideas and operations to follow in developing the calculus of complex valued functions. The natural sequence is really the outline of this chapter, and so there will be nothing in it which we can say is really new or surprising. And the rules you learn in a calculus class apply here. So like all the derivative rules are the same, the limit rules are the same. As I was saying earlier, the infinite series stuff is the same. So if you know some calculus, you can actually jump into it and start teaching yourself complex variables with this old book from, from 1973, which I, which I think is pretty cool. You just need a wooden table too. That's, <laughs> no, you don't need the table. This table is actually not even. 
Um, there's a board here that I had to fix. Um, but yeah, I actually dug this table out of the ground. It was buried. Let's see what else we got here. So it looks like someone wrote in the book. Perhaps there was a typo and they fixed it. You can see here there's an example. Suppose z sub 1 is equal to i, z sub 2 was 1 minus i. And you can see they just go straight to polar form. They don't even explain how they did it. Um, they just go straight to it and they multiply them. I mean, so it's pretty hardcore. There are easier books on complex variables. Also right here, you see this? This is just like information overload, right? Let's, let's read this. Because you can see how much information is in this one little piece here. In, in, a, in a more introductory book, like the one by Brown or Saf and Snyder, it's a, it's a little more gentle. This is a smaller book, but nevertheless, it's still good to have books like this. You know, books that are to the point are also beneficial. You can get a big, thick book that explains the same thing five different ways, or you can get one that gets right to the point. Both have their place, I feel, when it comes to learning. The complex plane is the familiar two-dimensional Cartesian plane, R squared, whose points are the complex numbers z, identified by specifying a pair of real numbers x and y, right. So we write z equals x plus iy. So x here is called the real part of the complex number, and y is called the imaginary part, where i satisfies the equation i squared equals negative 1. We can think of z as the point x comma y in r squared, or as the two-dimensional vector x, y over the reals. Yeah, so th there's, there's different ways to think about it, right? You can think about it as, as a point in r squared, or as a vector over the reals. You can also think of it like this, as the sum of x plus i, y, right? And, and you can do operations with it that way. So uh, it's kind of powerful. For z equals x plus y, y, oh, here we go. We call x equals r of z, r e z, so the real part of z, and y is the imaginary part of z. Uh, z bar, this is called the conjugate of z, so basically you just flip the sign. Uh, geometrically, that's really cool. Um, it's kind of like a reflection, and if I had a piece of paper and a pencil, I'd show you, but I don't. Uh, the conjugate of z, and then this is called the modulus of z. That's the square root of x squared plus y squared. Some people call it the absolute value, although typically that language is reserved for when you're dealing with real numbers. Note that the modulus of z will reduce to the absolute value when the imaginary part is zero because you'll get the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x. If y is zero, you just get the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x, which is the absolute value of x. So it works out. Note that the modulus squared is z times the conjugate, while the, while the modulus, or the absolute value of the real part of z is less than or equal to the modulus, and the absolute value of the imaginary part of z is less than or equal to the modulus. And then we have uh, this equation here as well. And uh, here it talks about polar coordinates. So you can see already there was a lot of information in just these two little paragraphs with no real examples. So it is not um, the easiest book for beginners. And here he goes on about complex numbers. Let's just skip ahead so you can see some other stuff. You can see here there's limits and stuff. The notation isn't great. Um, I guess their LaTeX was lacking, but uh, or maybe they didn't use LaTeX. I don't know. It looks like they did, but usually the H approach to zero would be under the LIM. Little stuff like that you see sometimes in older books. Typesetting isn't perfect, but as long as the math is good, a lot of times you'll find solutions manuals to old books, and they're like handwritten. I actually have a solutions manual to a book from the 60s, and it's a handwritten solution. Like a lot of it's handwritten in the solutions manual, which is pretty cool. A lot of these exercises are really good. They're very standard, by the way. So like if you're taking a class in college, you could totally use this as a supplement. And some of these questions, I mean, they might even appear on your test or at least like the ideas that you use to prove these problems, those will be reflected in other problems that you might find in a testing situation. So it's a beautiful subject. And some people say that complex variables is like the prettiest, nicest, most beautiful math class you can take as an undergrad. Um, I think a lot of it's gonna depend on your teacher, to be honest. Uh, you know, teacher makes all the difference because when you're sitting in a classroom and you have a teacher, like if the teacher makes sense and they're clear, it's just, it's just gold. It's worth it, right? Embrace it because different people are different. They explain different ways. If you can find someone that explains mathematics in a way that you understand it, you should learn as much as you can from that person. Oh, Laurent series. I have videos on this stuff. 
Yeah, this is cool. I have a lot. I have, I have quite a few videos on complex variables. Not a ton, but quite a few. I probably should do some more. Maybe I'll do some exercises from this book. Oh, look at this stuff. This is pretty easy for Calc 2 enthusiasts. Find the radius of convergence and the disk of convergence of each of the following power series. So notice it says disk. That's because in the complex plane, it's, it's literally a disk. And so when you draw the disk, you actually have a physical, like you actually have a radius, the radius of a circle. That's where the word radius comes from, because if you remember in Calc 2, they always talk about the interval of convergence. So it's a little bit different there. But yeah, in the past, when I've taught Calc 2, when I go over Taylor's theorem in class, I usually go over uh, the complex variables case, case. So the Calc 2 students know where the actual word radius comes from. It comes from the radius of this disk, uh, which is studied in complex variables. So I'm going to give it a whiff here. Ah, oh, smells so good. What a classic little book. So it's got some answers. It's a little bit terse. It's old. It's inexpensive. I think it's worth it. Uh, I don't know what I paid for this book, but uh, in my view, it's worth at least 20 bucks. I, I think it's a valuable book. I'm a collector of books. I know it's kind of weird, but um, I collect math books. Um, I collect many things, and math books are one of those things. The nice thing about uh, math books is that they are a collectible that um, you can learn from, right? You can, you can learn knowledge from math. And I personally do a little bit of math every day. I think it's a good way to keep your math skills sharp. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. And if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. If you want to learn math, by the way, I have courses. They're actually on Udemy. But if you decide to get them, um, check out my website or use the links from my videos. My website is mathsorcerer.com or, or freemathvids.com. Um, just check that out and there's links there and it'll take you to the Udemy courses. I have tons of courses on all areas of math. I don't have a complex variables course yet. I probably should start working on one. Maybe I will. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.